In this video, we're going to talk about GNS3 switching. Now, unfortunately, you'll find a lot of incorrect information on the internet. You'll find blog entries and YouTube videos showing you as an example how to configure ASA 8 on GNS3. That's not a good idea. Don't use ASA 8 as an example with GNS3 today. One of the reasons that Julian and I and others have created updated documentation on the GNS3 website is to help you learn the correct way of doing things with GNS3. This document, Switching and GNS3, explains a common misconception about GNS3. A lot of people today still believe that GNS3 does not support advanced switching. That's incorrect. Some people still believe that the only way to configure switches in GNS3 is to use an Ether switch module in a Cisco router. That's also incorrect. While that may have been true in the past, it's no longer true today. GNS3 supports options such as Ether Channel, PVST Plus, Rapid PVST, Multiple Spanning Tree, Port Security, Dynamic Trunk Protocol, and many others. Those are all layer two switching options that weren't supported in the past, but are now supported. Complementary campus technology such as HSRP are also now supported. However, the image and platform that you select will affect what you can do with GNS3. Options include using the Cisco IOS V layer two image from Cisco Viral, that is the recommended way to implement switching today. You can use an Ether switch module and insert it into a Cisco router in GNS3 or use the pre-built Ether switch switch. You can use IOU. You could use the GNS3 built-in switch. You could use other options such as Open V switch and others. There are many switching options and in this video, I'm gonna kick off with iOS V layer two. In subsequent videos, I'll cover other switching options, but let me emphasize that the best way to do switching today in GNS3 is to use iOS V Layer 2. This is the recommended switching platform, and it supports many options. As you can see here on the Cisco website, it supports dynamic op inspection, it supports DHCP snooping, it supports VTP versions 1, 2, and 3, supports PVST, supports VLAN access maps, and many other options. Options that it doesn't support include port mirroring or span and private VLANs. But in most cases, for CCNA, CCMP, and even pushing towards CCIE, you can use GNS3 for switching iOS V layer two is also the official way of emulating a switch and hence is recommended. There are many reasons to use viral images instead of other options, but I will cover various switching technologies to show you technically how to implement switching technologies in GNS3. So I will cover ether switch modules, IOU, non Cisco options such as the GNS3 built-in switch, Open vSwitch, Cumulus Networks, and others through a series of videos that are part of the GNS3 talks. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a Cisco IOS V image in version 2.0 of GNS3. In this example, I'm using GNS3 with a GNS3 VM. The version of the GNS3 VM is 2.0. And that's also the version of the GNS3 GUI. When using appliances from the GNS3 marketplace, you should use the GNS3 VM. So I'm gonna search in the marketplace for iOS V. And in this case, I wanna download the iOS V layer two appliance. So I'm gonna click on download template, which downloads the appliance to my local computer. Now in this example, I'm using a Mac 
but the process is the same on Windows. Go to the GNS3 website, download the appliance, have it available in your downloads directory. In this case, my Mac has changed the extension. So I'm gonna change it back to GNS3 appliance. So in Windows, you do something very similar. You go to the GNS3 website and you download the appliance template. You also need to make sure that you have the operating system available. So I've copied the downloaded iOS layer two image to my downloads directory on this Mac. So make sure that you've got the appliance template downloaded as well as the operating system. As always, my apologies for mentioning it again, but just to reiterate, neither I nor GNS3 can give you iOS images. You need to purchase a viral license. Below this video, I've put a link to another video where I discuss how to download Cisco viral images and Cisco iOS images. Have a look at that video for more information. So now I'm gonna to go to File, Import Appliance. The appliance I wanna import is the Cisco iOS V layer two appliance. I'm gonna click Open. We told that the category the appliance will be added to is multi-layer switch. It's a Cisco IOS V layer two appliance from Cisco. The maintainer is the GNS3 team. KVM is required. That means that you can't use VirtualBox with this appliance. You need to use VMware. So either VMware Fusion, Workstation Pro, or Workstation Player. I'm using VMware Fusion, so I'm okay, so I'm gonna click Next. We wanna run the appliance on the GNS3 VM. If you've got a remote server configured, for instance, running on ESXi, you could also use that. But in this example, I don't, so I'm gonna use a local GNS3 VM. Click Next. My server requirements are okay, so I'm gonna click Next. Now it's picked up a viral image that I previously downloaded and moved to the downloads directory. If that's not found, you can click on this download link, which will take you to the viral website to download the image. You will need a valid login to be able to download the images from Cisco Viral. You could also select the import option and point GNS3 to the file that you've downloaded if it doesn't pick it up in the downloads directory. But in my example, it's found it, so I'm gonna click Next. We asked whether we wanna install the Cisco IOS V Layer 2 version. I'm gonna say yes. We then need to specify QMU settings. I'm gonna simply stay with the defaults and click Next. We told once again that KVM is required. The adapter type that will be configured is E1000. The architecture is i386, adapters is 16, console access is via Telnet, and the RAM required is 768 meg. The great thing about using appliances from the GNS3 website is all of this is pre-configured for you. So it makes the import process very simple. We're told that there is no default password or enable password on the device, so we can click Finish. Now in this case, I've already got an appliance using the same name. So I'll just simply rename this as new at the end and click OK. I'm now told that that appliance is imported into GNS3 and it's now available under the switches category and I could drag it to the GNS3 workspace. So I've now got two switches imported and I could connect them to one another. One of the great things in version 2.0 of GNS3 is you can now connect these devices while they're running. Previously, they had to be turned off 
when making connections between them. I can view the labels. So as an example, put my labels like this. So I can see how they connected to one another. And I could then open up a console to each switch. As you can see in the output, the switches are booting up. Cisco IOS V images and V layer two images take a while to boot up. And when they boot up initially, they use a lot of RAM and CPU. But once they've booted up, you'll notice that the RAM and CPU utilization go down. Okay, so on the first switch, give it a host name of switch one. I'll configure an IP address on VLAN one. Do something similar on switch two. Configure a host name on VLAN one. Give it an IP address. And now what I should be able to do is ping switch one. And there we go. So there's the ping again. And on switch one, I should be able to ping switch two. Show spanning tree as an example shows us options. We can see that the switch is running per VLAN rapid spanning tree. We can see that switch one is the root of the spanning tree topology. iOS V layer two supports many options. So as an example, we could change the mode to MST. So show spanning tree now shows us that the mode has changed. We can see that all the ports are blocking at the moment. Now they've moved to the learning state. And after a while, they'll converge, show spanning tree. Notice how the port costs are different on the switch on the right running per VLAN rapid spanning tree versus the switch on the left, which is running multiple spanning tree. The costs here are very different to the cost of values used on the switch. Now the ports are forwarding. The switch is the root of the spanning tree, but it's using multiple spanning tree, whereas the switch continues to use per VLAN rapid spanning tree. Show spanning tree MST will allow us to see MST specific information we can see that the instance used here is IST or MST0. All VLANs are mapped to that instance. The switch is the root for the common instance spanning tree or CIST. Hence, all ports are forwarding. So Cisco Viral iOS V layer two images support many options. Don't believe stuff on the internet where they tell you that you can't do switching in GNS3. With these viral images, you can implement options such as link aggregation or ether channel, different modes of spanning tree, HSRP, VRRP, and many other switching related technologies. In subsequent videos, I'll discuss other ways of setting up switching in GNS3. You have many options that you can leverage in GNS3 today. I hope you found the video useful. If you enjoyed it, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel.